Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to uh, have you here with me. It's, uh, uh, let me see, it's about quarter to 11. I've just watered all the orchids the way I did in the last video. And today I want to discuss um, the types of pots that work for me and what hasn't worked and why. And also, uh, we're going to repot the one in the pot I was worried about. So let's get to it. But just a minute, I have to fix something. Oh boy, it's so sunny out here. I can't see really what I'm doing. So let's hope this goes good. Okay, let's get at it. <laughs> First, be so I can put them in. Um, I've watered the slipper orchids and I don't know if you remember when I uh, unwrapped this one. This is the one I dropped on the floor. And surprise, surprise. Now, I hope you can see, I think I'm getting a flower. And I'm pretty excited. Now, I can't see it all because of the sun out here. And uh, I'm hoping that you can. So, um, I want to put it in right away. I don't want to leave it out in the sun. It's about 70 out here. And the second one I got is doing well too. This one had the new growth coming. And then I noticed the flower coming. And this one is doing happily too. So what I think I'll do while the video is going is just put them in the shade over here. There we go. There. I just didn't want to leave them out in the sun too long. Now, I do not leave the orchids outside. As soon as they're all dried off, I look at all their leaves and check them and put them back in the patio where it's always very hot because of all the glass. It covers the walls and the roof. And it's quite hot, often 100 or more in there. And I have a fan on them and I have humidity. So um, this is where all the ones that are not in bloom go. But today, all the orchids are out here. And let's discuss this pot first. Now, we'll deal with the problems first. I painted this pot in a, quite a video a long time ago, and I was worried about it. And it had, uh, in the clay mixture, it had a kind of a black line running through it. I cleaned it up. I painted it. And um, hopefully you can see something about this pot. As nice as it looks, I don't know what I'm going to put in it, do with it, but uh, it's an, I'm going to get another road cone because the orchid in the road cone loves it and it's plastic. I'm going to get a smaller one to put in this stand to take the place of this one. And the reason is why, this is the first orchid I put in it. And this has been one of my problem orchids. And even when I purchased it, it had all these ruffly leaves. And uh, it wasn't doing well. But of course, I put it in this pot that I'm worried about, and it went downhill. And I was going to lose it. So I put it into this pot, and it started to get a new leaf in the pot before I took it out and then now it's getting another new leaf and I think it will continue to do better and uh, anyway this is one of the problem or because I will always and I'm going to blame that pot why am I going to blame that pot because the others are doing pretty good and I thought I'd give it a second chance so I had put this orchid I had put this orchid in that pot it was very healthy. Well, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's a grocery store orchid, but um, all the leaves started to go the same way, very limp. So I'm pretty sure, and when I looked, it wasn't um, doing well. So I'm going to take all this dead off, and I'm going to put it in another pot until I paint a road a new road comb pot. So most of the time, now these aren't soggy because I have them, it was in bark, but it just, um, there's no real 
new roots. Usually by now I should see some nice new roots coming. And uh, there isn't. So um, what I'm going to do is just clean off this, this debris. And I'm going to put it in another pot to hold it until I can um, paint a road cone. Because I want to use that stand. And the road cone seems to be working very well. Um, now. This was a plastic road cone that shows danger on the road. It's a heavy plastic. We put big holes. I think this is part of the thing. And even though it's a big pot, this orchid just took to it. And uh, it's got lots of healthy roots. I'm very happy with it. And uh, we'll put you over with the slipper orchids. So this is the plan. Um, it's going to go in this tiny little pot until I purchase a road cone and I'll be repainting one. So um, there's nothing gooey. It's just uh, stagnant. So the first thing I want to do is cut off this flower because it's only, it's only taking energy from the plant. So I'm just going to cut it high to begin with and take these little uh, papers off that have it tied to the stem. See what I do when I uh, when I cut my my flowers off. I usually have a little pot. Um, it's a little high. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to <laughs> cut it again, and I'm going to stick it. I have a little I have a little square pot. I keep water in it. And I'm just going to make a, there's company for dinner tonight, so I thought I'll make a little decoration. They stay quite a long time, maybe not as long as on the plant, but uh, they're quite happy. And I'm going to cut that one and that one. And, and if you see one of these little, <laughs> little plants, Dance. They got little prickly things in there, and you can just put the flower in there. Yeah. Hope you're seeing this. Anyway, there we go. We got a little table centerpiece, and I'll just put this over here for now. There. So, some people always say, "What? Where do I cut it?" Well, this. <laughs> This is what I do. There's the bottom node. I like to do, to take it, I like to take it about maybe halfway from the bottom node to that node. And later, um, later I can always, always um, cut it down further once it's brown. Or um, I could leave it and let it dry off. It might form another flower, which I don't want to do. So, But if it was a healthy plant, I could leave it longer. And then later I could use it as a to tie the new flower stems on. So, you know, there's alternative things. But uh, this is going to be cut right where I showed you. And then I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon only where the trim is. I don't want it falling on the roots. It'll only desiccate them worse. So just a little bit of cinnamon to stop any bacterial problems. So just a bit of water. So what I'm going to do is um, I think I'll just pull off anything I don't like. Now sometimes um, if you've repotted an orchid and um, because a lot of these roots when they were packed in that moss, a lot of these roots have already, uh, they couldn't absorb anymore, they weren't getting air and even though they were in there and they, they hadn't gone mucky yet, they, they weren't good so sometimes maybe you go to look at your pot, you unpot it like I like to suggest you do 
and some of the roots might have dried but what you look for is new roots coming and usually what you do see is you see nice new green roots newer ones coming and you may find some some ones that have died off that you can either trim or pull the outer then leave the core so um, quite often that's what I do because I'm not dealing with um, uh, rot and it will help it stay in the pot a little so here we go there was no new roots so um, I have some bark here and I'm going to squeeze them in, in this little pot and I have some bark in this and I'm just going to squeeze them now he's not got a lot of media around him but because this is this is a pot that Jack drilled some holes in and it's quite thick so what it will do will help it'll still get air but it'll help hold some new humidity and, and maybe encourage some new roots before it got any worse so I'll just push all those back in there and sometimes you find that you find uh, some plants like a certain type of pot more than another one I've had very good success with the plastic and lots of air holes. The bigger the holes, the better. That's what I like. As you can see, I hope you can see now the purple one, it was in spike, deep purple. It was in spike in December. And the flowers were just opening in January. All of January we had flowers and here we are. They're getting a little limp now, but this has been flowering since January and in spike and even enjoyable to watch as they're coming in spike. So um, we've had a lot of enjoyment and pretty soon I'll be taking the spike off of that one. As soon as the spikes are off, they go in the patio for the summer. Now I've only been watering once a week because we've had hot weather and then rainy few days Hot. so I've been sticking with just watering once a week but as soon as it turns like it did last year just hot month after month then I will give them an extra water uh, just with the watering can halfway so they'll get their normal soak out here sprayed with the hose now they're not staying out here it would be too hot and I don't trust a lot of the little animals there's raccoons running around and squirrels and I'm sure they'd uh, eat them so they go back in the patio in the shade they're just out here they're drying off they've all been watered and uh, um, let's see the leaves like this one it, it uh, was one that we, I saved. It had lost all its leaves but two, and now all the new leaves are perfectly firm. And that's what you'll find. You'll find um, a lot of time the older leaves are still quite limp, but when you get your new leaves, they'll be nice and firm. So anyway, that's watering day. I'm going to clean them up, put them in there, and hopefully we'll be showing you a slipper orchid in blossom soon. And I have a, an interesting video planned for some dark night. <laughs> so thanks for watching and uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments and uh, uh, you're very good friends to have around. Thank you very much.